Hey there, welcome to Farmcraft. I'm John, and I've had this thing for a really long time, and I've been itching to work on it. I realized the list is never going to have time to work on something that's just for fun, so I've waited long enough. We're doing it. This is an Argo. I forget what year it is. If I can find it, I will put it on the screen right now. Here's the story on this thing. This was used by an older guy who was a hunter and uh, used on a pretty regular basis, is my understanding, until... COVID hit and early in the COVID process when COVID was still dangerous, uh, he got COVID and killed him. And then this thing sat for a couple of years. It won't run. It doesn't have a battery or the battery is totally dead. It comes with the cursory can of starting fluid already in it. So the goal of this video is gonna be to see, can I get this thing started? Will it run? Does it drive? What's wrong with it? So we're going to have some fun today, play with an old Argo. And I'm excited because I have a pond, so an amphibious vehicle would be pretty fun around here. So let's get this thing over to the shop and we'll see what's going on with it. saw pictures of it I thought it was pretty big and then when I saw it in person I was surprised I mean it's not tiny I guess you can fit an adult and a child up front yeah what I just did there might not make sense to everybody Typically the thing's just obviously sitting on all four tires and when you try to move it, you've got a lot of friction. So basically I, I got it here because the thing's a little front heavy, the engine's there. So the midpoints, you know, the balance points probably somewhere under that wheel. So if I get two blocks under that wheel and it's up and now it's balanced, well these aren't giving me any friction anymore and I can rotate it. Of course, as you rotate it, it comes off the block. Yeah, if you balance something in the middle, it's very easy for you to manipulate it. All right. One Argo. Looks like we've got a Kohler V-Twin 17 horsepower drive belt. So uh, I know nothing about these machines. I'm coming at this totally cold. So this will be interesting. So let's take a look around before we get into it too much. It's like we've got a winch plate up front and yeah, plastic's got some cracks in it here and there, some worse than others. It's not in horrible shape. This little rubber bumper thing has come off. It looks like <laughs> the bolts that uh, were in here are gone and they've got like twist wire. This guy must've been a farmer. <laughs> and of course it could all use some cleaning, but I want to make sure this thing is going to be worth uh, working on before I go doing all that. One of the things that really made me, one, believe the guy's story, because he was talking about his, I don't know, it was his uncle or something that had died. Like this one's lost some air, but uh, the tires are in pretty good shape. They don't have cracks in them. They don't look dry rotted. So I think those tires are you know, relatively new. So I think it is likely that this thing was, was used and hopefully it still floats and doesn't leak too bad. That would be sweet if all I have to do is get it running and you know oil some things do a little maintenance clean it up maybe make a seat or something and then take it out on the pond that would be fun all right so what do we got inside here it looks like they had a oh i guess it has plugs like a boat i guess that would make sense wouldn't it the battery's there yeah, i guess that's not too bad it's barely on there is that my what is that hose is not hooked to anything on the other side Ah, it was supposed to be it's supposed to be hooked to that. You can't really get full access to it. They give you this little thing in the center and then these things are in the way. That's kind of annoying. My first thought was take it off, but then like all these things are connected to it. Yeah, I think the, the alternator here is connected to it and all this wiring and the starter solenoid. Well, it looks like we have some farmer wiring going on. Well, I'm looking down there at the battery. It says 6 21 which amazes me when did i buy this thing i guess i bought it in 22 so uh darn it I have a feeling that battery is probably discharged and 
has frozen. It's probably ruined it, but uh, I'll hook it up to a charger and we'll see what it does. And the first thing this will do is tell you the voltage, which I don't know if you can read that. It's 2.6 and falling. Yeah, so that's going to assume that's a 6 volt battery if it does anything at all and it won't charge it. Um, these, these modern chargers are really annoying like that. They need an, an override or something where you can tell it, put 12 volts to that battery for 30 minutes and then charge it because that's all you need to do. It doesn't even need to be 30 minutes. You just basically need to, to get it back to almost 12 volts and then this thing will know, okay, that's a 12 volt battery. But uh, as it is, this thing's not going to do anything. So let's go get an old charger. Yeah, I got this old school solid state. You can hear it buzzing. It actually makes voltage. Battery's not taking a lot though. I think that battery might be shot. But yeah, those old char those new chargers, I wonder how many people are throwing batteries away that could still be used. Because many times, if you totally kill a battery, a new charger will not charge it back up. But if you get a charge to it, then it will work uh, for a long time. The battery's not ruined. So if you don't have a charger like this, which usually will do it, I'll show you the next best thing, which is just to hook it to a different 12 volt battery. I'm just making sure there's not a dead short. It didn't spark or anything, so I don't think there is, and that the wires don't get hot from too much current going in them. But I have a feeling that this battery is open circuited. I don't think there's any current going in them. So I'm just checking the voltage, which goes straight to the starter solenoid, which is right here, to see if we have power, and we do, 12.4. So, Those have been attached for a while. There's not a lot of current going through there, so I'm gonna let that sit there. I think that battery's probably toast, but in the off chance, maybe it'll uh, maybe that'll help it. Let's turn our attention to this engine. How about the oil? Oil's black but full. Yeah, it needs changed. Let's see what we got for an air filter. Yeah, I got two seven twenty one. Looks like someone was taking care of this thing. I didn't pay a lot for this. I don't remember exactly how much I paid. I think it was like 1800 maybe? I really did not expect it to be good grief. It's probably been more than a year since I uh, bought this thing before I actually even try to start it. I mean, I literally brought it home and put it in my barn. I haven't done anything to it. Yeah, I love to see that. This guy was taking care of this thing. See, that was stuck. And if I'm not mistaken, it was stuck on full throttle. So you don't want to just go up to an engine that's been sitting a long time and start it because you may end up with a runaway, especially if it's got a bad governor or something on it. You can trash the engine real quick. It's interesting. One coil going to both cylinders. Yeah, there's our choke right here. It seems to work fine. So we've got oil. You know, I could probably spray some starting fluid in this and, and crank it over now, but there's a couple things I want to do. One, I like to, especially an engine that's been sitting and that I don't know, let's look at the spark plugs and just see the condition of the plugs, see if it's been running rich or anything, you know, before I start tinkering with it. Maybe we'll get some information. Uh, the other thing is, I've got a new tool that happens to be the sponsor of this video. This will be a good time to put that new tool to the test. Let's check the plugs first. I don't know if it would still be uh, pertinent after all this time, but it looks pretty sooty, like it's running rich. Yeah, same on that one. As you'd expect, it's one output from the carburetor. You can see that one. Pretty black, fair amount of soot. Not horrible, but fair amount of soot on it. You know, it's probably not fair to even judge the carburetor based on those plugs. Because who knows, although it's probably the carburetor is the reason it won't start. The guy may have tried to get it started for a while before he sold it. Who knows what he did trying to get it started. So check this out, guys. This is another endoscope. You think, ah, oh, another endoscope. I've seen so many of those. You might not have seen one like this. This one has one camera. It doesn't have a side camera or two side cameras, which I find fairly disorienting. Every time I get in, I finally get the view 
And then I changed to a side camera. I'm like, okay, well, which way did it go? Am I now looking to the right, to the left, up, down? I don't know. And, um, you know, obviously you can get better at it, but uh, this one steers with this wheel right here. I can move the camera. In fact, I can move it 180 degrees and look back the way I came, or I can go the other direction and do the same thing. So I've got a full 360 degree view that I can go around with the end of that scope. Now you do need, that looks like maybe an inch and a quarter there to be able to swing past. So we'll see if these cylinders are big enough to do that. I think they would be. Let's check this thing out. That's very cool. Uh, we'll go down in the cylinder and see how it looks. Well, that's not what I was expecting here, huh? Okay. Well, I'm immediately seeing valves even though I'm going straight in. And that to the right must be the, the piston. No. There it is. I see a little bit of junk in there. That may be, what is that, surface rust? That's what it looks like. But man, it's nice to be able to just kind of look back and forth when I'm in the cylinder. It's so much easier to look around than, uh, than with the other scopes where you have to change cameras. Problem is, is I'm not loving what I'm seeing here. I'm glad I took a look though, because what I think I'm going to do is put a good bit of oil in these cylinders before I do anything else. To try to lubricate this and hopefully they can... You know, if it's just a little bit of surface rust, it'll probably blow off and not be a big deal. Let's see how the other cylinder looks. Yeah, this engine's not in the, in the configuration I was expecting. Oh yeah, it is. Yeah, it is, of course. The spark plugs aren't right on top of the head though. Yeah, that cylinder looks about the same. Not horrible, you know, I don't see any like deep score marks or anything, but um, I really wish I didn't have a bunch of surface rust on it. That's what it looks like though. So, yeah, let's put plenty of oil in there and we'll crank this thing some, try to lube those cylinders up before we get in there and uh, actually try to start it. As far as this endoscope, I really like it immediately it's just much easier to go in and just take a look around because you've got good control, just a move of your thumb, you can look back and forth, and I find it much less disorienting than, um, than the other type. Vivor does it again. They make some pretty cool stuff. If you're interested, I'll leave a link in the description. Let's, uh, let's get some oil in these cylinders. So I've got two cycle oil here, and I'm just gonna put 10 cc's in each cylinder. Now, a lot of times things on these endoscopes look a lot worse than they are because you're so up close. The camera's right on it. So hopefully, hopefully it's not as bad as it looked, but um, yeah, what are you going to do? Oh, by the way, these are Champion RC-14s. Decent plug. Certainly don't look uh, worn out or anything. Now... Also, before I crank it, I don't want to pull a bunch of junk from the fuel tank into the carburetor. Let me see what we can do as far as uh, maybe blowing out the fuel lines. Check out this fuel tank a little bit. I can actually see liquid in it. it smells like turpentine. So yeah, we certainly don't want crappy fuel going in there. Good news is, is it didn't look dirty. It's just, uh, I think it's just going to be too old. So this is the fuel tank, and it's removable. I love that. The only thing I really have to contend with is the filler hose connects right there, and it's not very accessible. But if I can get the tank to drop down and even go that way a little bit, go that way a little bit, it uh, should become a lot easier. Darn flathead on the other side. Yeah, that one came off. That's a pain. The angled screwdriver to the rescue. 
I'm replacing these bolts. I mean, there should, <laughs> there should at least be a hex head on the opposite side. A flathead screwdriver on the underside is like the worst. Be any more in my way. Nothing exciting here. I'm just undoing a hose clamp. That's loose. Well, the hose itself actually come off. There it is. Yeah, just a hose clamp there. The hose around it might be a little fun to put back together. I wonder if that's the guy said it wouldn't run. I wonder if he was trying to run it on that fuel. Of course, it's been a while. That fuel was probably better when I bought this thing. See how this fuel looks. Looks more like pee than it does gasoline. Kind of sounds like it too. It's making me need to go. <laughs> Happens when you get older. <laughs> the nice thing is the tank is not full of rust or other junk. It's just old fuel. That's easy. Let's do a little experiment with this fuel. But I'm going to still be somewhat careful here. So the screwdriver is wet with it. It burned a little bit. Not much, it's still wet. So yeah, that fuel is barely even flammable anymore. So all the, the stuff that would make it worthwhile as fuel has, has evaporated off and it's just left garbage behind that has no purpose. So I'm trying to look inside there and see the pickup tube but you really can't see it. I want to see it and you know just make sure there's not a lot of sludge. I do see right underneath where the pickup is there's a bowl so I assume the tube is down in there and I want to make sure that that's not full of crud down in there. Doesn't look like it from the outside but as you already know I have just the tool for this. Oh cool, I'm looking up at, at the pickup. So that's the bowl right there. And it's not so easy to get it to go exactly where you want. There. I'm in the bowl. And there's a couple little pieces of nothing. Nothing to worry about, and uh, I think an inline fuel filter on this would be a fantastic idea. That's a cool little device. So here's the other end of that fuel line coming from the tank, and there's a little fuel pump that um, probably runs off the impulse. So I'm going to undo that line there, because it's probably full of that nasty fuel, and there's just no reason to suck that into the carburetor and have to deal with it. It's going to run a lot better if we can get fresh fuel in it. Alright. Yeah, a bunch of that fuel just dumped out into the bottom right there. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and blow it out too. Now, battery's still hooked up, no chance of starting because the plug wires aren't hooked up. Let's see if this thing will turn over. Hmm. Starter is not engaging the flywheel. Well, we definitely have compression. Well, that's unfortunate. Put a socket on that and just turn this thing over a little bit.
Actually, I can do it by hand, it's not that bad. Since I have oil in those cylinders, it should be getting circulated. Now the next thing I'm going to need to do is figure out why the starter isn't working. Boy, that's going to be easy to get to. It looks like it's down on the bottom. Yikes. Hey. Well, that certainly circulated that oil. All right, I have to quit for the day, but I can't help it. I really should be inside now helping Jennifer make dinner, but you know, she'll understand, I hope. A little starting fluid. Doesn't seem it's going to be that easy. May not have spark. All right, guys, I'm going to have to leave it here. We'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> As usual, there's uh, there's more work to be done. I almost forgot to show you guys. Let's see if I can get this thing to stay where you can see it. I uh, disconnected that battery, put a voltmeter on here, and I get 11.6 volts, 11.7. So. Let's put it on a charger overnight and see if we can't revive this thing. I'm still not super hopeful, but uh, at least the charger will try now. Yeah, it's saying 11.6. I'm gonna call that a power sport standard. So yeah, there it goes. Trying to charge it, 12 volts. We'll see how that looks tomorrow. Put a, a load test on it and see if that battery's junk or not. This thing says it's fully charged. So the question is, is it going to be able to take a load? So let me take the charger off. Wow. All right, I know this um, this meter is not right, but it's the relative drop under load testing that matters. That's not so bad. May not be great. Seem to have dropped a fair amount there. But it's a small battery. Let's see if this thing has enough juice to crank the engine. Sure does. <laughs> That's crazy. All right, so at the end of the day yesterday, we did not have any spark. Well, no, I'm suspecting we didn't have spark. I didn't get any firing with spraying starting fluid in there. You know, the starting fluid's almost gone, but it also was sitting in here. Does starting fluid go bad just like gasoline? Maybe this is old. Doesn't look that old. I don't know. Let's check for spark. Let's see if we have any spark. I see spark on both of them. All right. Yeah, that was pretty loose. Let me just check these connections on the coil. Because even though we had spark there, they didn't seem like super strong, but I bet you the spark's fine. It's got brass contacts, so they're not rusty or anything. And neither of those was super tight. Condent condenser's not swollen. Doesn't mean it's good, but it's a good sign. Now I'm hoping the starter, um, the Bendix wasn't, uh, wasn't engaging when I kept trying to start it. It's possible that that battery being so dead mean I, meant I was sending basically low voltage to it and it wasn't quite enough. I doubt it. The other thing is it could be that there's some grease and stuff around the Bendix that's just gotten hard and old from lack of use and it may loosen up with, with repeated use. So that may be a self-correcting problem. Yeah, I know, wishful thinking, but we're gonna hope. I have a feeling I'm gonna be taking this carb off of here in a little bit. That I wish would, uh, would move a little better. It was kind of stuck when I first saw it, but it's still 
doesn't really want to return to idle, but we'll, we'll see how it runs. Maybe, maybe that position for idling is fine. All right, shall we give it another try with some starting fluid? Yeah, I'm going to use the same stuff because I'm skeptical that the starting fluid was bad. Starter's doing that again. Wow. That ran for quite a while there on that. So that thing seemed to run for uh, for actually quite a while, considering. It's kind of weird that the, the throttle is off. I wonder if I'm not trying to start this thing right. Maybe I ought to keep the throttle wide open when I'm trying to uh, to start it. I need four hands. All right, let me try this. I'm gonna spray. I'm going to throttle. And I'm gonna start. Ooh, a little backfire. Yeah, I think I'm gonna pull this carburetor. I think it's worth taking it off. It's gonna be a fair amount of work. Hopefully not for nothing. But I don't like the way these are are not like, it doesn't seem to be clean. And I highly suspect that there's a bowl full of uh, that junky fluid in there. Be worth getting that out. The way this thing's positioned, like I can't even get to the bowl. I can touch it. Yeah, I think uh, I think we pull the carb. It fired though. I think we have a runner. We just got to get the the carb right and get good clean fuel to it. And I think that thing's gonna run just fine. It sounds good. So, looks to me like this is the high-speed screw that's going to be the, the pilot jet. So let's see where they're set at now. Half, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, really? Almost four and a half. It looks like four and, uh, four and a quarter, which I suspect is probably uh, not where it's supposed to be. And then this one, I need a different screwdriver. This one, half, one, just over one and a half. Some crud on that. That's got some holes in it. Like that doubles as the emulsion tube and the main jet. It's interesting. All right, let's see what we got in this bowl. Maybe it's not going to drain out. Not that dirty, just some varnish. Use a little bit of cleaning. Looks pretty reasonable. The needle's not stuck. It's adjusted to a, a pretty good level. Needle looks good. Seat looks pretty good. So not strictly necessary. This is this goes into the back side of that and I can see it's open. But if I can get it out without having to torque on it too hard, wouldn't hurt. Yeah. Those are brass and you end up stripping them out. So I'm just gonna leave that. Maybe you can see it's wide open there. We're going to run this thing through the ultrasonic, so um, not necessary to go too crazy with it. Go ahead and get these off of here. Whenever I take anything apart, I'm paying attention to the length of the bolts so I can put it back together. And this is as, it, as you would expect. These two are shorter because they have less distance to travel. This one, being out here, is longer. And this part really isn't part of the carburetor. That's just a 90 degree bend, but we'll clean it up. This gasket doesn't look great, but it also doesn't matter that much because um, this is before the fuel air mixture. It's the gasket on the other side that matters, and that one actually looks pretty good. That's an unusual diaphragm. It's not really a diaphragm. I'm not entirely sure the function of this little section here. 
but I'm not going to run that through the ultrasonic. We'll just clean that off with some carb spray. So that's the idle set screw, but that can be uh, that can be left as it is for now. Yeah, it looks like that gasket's going to come off, so I'll go ahead and take it off. Again, probably don't want to put that through the ultrasonic. I may even make a new gasket, even though it's not a critical gasket. So you can see there the pilot jet is wide open. Yeah, that looks fine. Main jet. Now, there's little holes on that guy. This one down here looks... is that clogged? So when I spray in there, I can see it coming out up here. So I guess what will be interesting, if I spray in here, does it come out the bottom? A little bit. Yep. That's good. Pilot jet should come out right there. And it does. Main jet, obviously. We know that one's open. And then incoming fuel line. Yep. Oh, I can feel that loosen up. Yeah, getting some of that crud out of there, and I think the ultrasonic is going to help with that too. This is just a little degreaser. several holes down in here. That one I saw before. There's also three. They're so small it's hard to tell. Is it a scratch or is it a hole? See there's a hole. There's a hole and another. All right. So I think it looks pretty good. This is still a touch stiff. Which I don't like that. So I might see if I can't get a little bit of uh, lithium grease because it should stick around and spray it in there and in here. I would take the the actual throttle off the throttle plate but it looks like those screws have already partially stripped and uh, I don't really want to strip them so let me see if I can get that running smoother without taking that off the choke not as big of an issue it runs pretty smooth still needs a little bit of brushing it's got a little bit of scale left on it from the ultrasonic everything else came out looking pretty good Still a little tight right there. I don't like that. Let me see if those screws will come out. It would be nice to be able to get in. There's probably some scale or something in there. Yeah, I don't think so. Got that one. Oh, got it. Okay. There's a little bit of something there. I'll probably just take a scotch Bright pad, pad to that. It actually feels pretty good once you take the plate off. Kind of makes me wonder if that plate just needed to be centered a little better, maybe? Should be self-centering. Let's just clean it up. Yeah, I think it's it's down in the deepest part where it's having issues. So I'm gonna take a piece of Scotch Brite to the end of this. Definitely better. I'm just gonna have a touch of grease on them and we're gonna call it good. Yeah, that feels much better. Click. That's a big improvement right there. So let's go ahead and put the, uh, this is the pilot jet, or the idle, the low speed screw. And it was, what, four and a quarter or something? I'm gonna do a turn and a half. That's what I think would be a reasonable initial setting. So that's closed. So there's half, one, one and a half. I'm gonna do the same with the main jet. I think, if I remember right, that's what it was. And I sprayed that tube out with carb cleaner and blew it out with air. And it is nice and clean. 
so that's closed, so that's half, one, one and a half. Okay, looks good. Now we got this goofy gasket, which went on there like this. I guess I should have done that first. We're putting this float on, but I think we can still manage. I don't think I've ever come across a bowl, I'll call it a gasket. I mean, really, it's usually just an O-ring that looked like this. Anyone out there know, is this stock? Kind of goofy. Bowl cleaned up nice. Right. Kind of an interesting carb. There's no diaphragm in there that needs rebuilding. Um, this thing should be should be ready to roll. You just clean it out. Very simple. So let's get this reinstalled and uh, put some fuel to it and see what it does. Okay, there's that little piece of fuel line coming off the fuel pump and going to the carb. I'm going to replace that. Yeah, see that gas gets important and it looks good. Before we get too far, let's get this choke on. I'm do a spritz of WD-40 to help that. There we go. A little easier that way. A little bit on the outside too for that dumb clamp. WD-40 is actually nice for this kind of stuff because it's kind of a temporary lubricant. It's not going to stay there very long. So... That's not going anywhere. Alright. Look at how much better that is. Love it. Alright, we're going to hook the fuel tank back up. For putting the fuel tank back in, this is going to be the key. This is the filler spout, or the filler neck, or whatever. Filler tube, filler hose. That's not tight, but it's on just enough that it won't, uh, won't fall off. There we go. I got some bolts with an actual hex head on them. So I can bring those up through, get a nut on it. And then those are gonna be easy to tighten because I can just reach behind with a 7 16 wrench and grab that hex. Unlike a regular screwdriver, That's a little better. So in theory, I should be able to put fuel on this and uh, start her up. I'm gonna take some cranking to get the fuel to the carburetor. I guess if I was smarter, I would have thought about that and put some fuel in the bowl. I have to say, I like the fuel tank on this. You can remove it in about 20 minutes and it's not gonna rust. Don't fill it full of junk and it'll be fine. In an attempt to be less of an idiot, I, uh, I decided to take this fuel line off and I'm high enough that I can gravity feed through the fuel pump into the carb and, and hopefully get fuel to it rather than trying to pump it this entire way because I blew everything out. I didn't show it on camera, I don't think, but I, I blew out the fuel pump as well. So it's just total dry air that uh, it's gonna be trying to pump. 
and probably having some trouble priming. So let's do this. So I don't know if that got all the way to the bowl of the carb, but it's barely taken any more fuel. I'm certain I at least got to the fuel pump. So we should be good now. Let's not do the starting fluid. Let's crank this thing and see if it'll start. So choke, throttle, checking, yeah, that returns all the way to the idle set screw now, so that's good. All right, let's see what we get. Look at that. Checking to see if we're charging. Not charging. That's interesting. Why would that suddenly stall? in there. Throttle sticking on. I think this little piece of weather stripping, not weather stripping, but this <laughs> this little rubber seal that I didn't notice got behind it and jammed up the throttle. I think that's what happened. Kind of strange, it seemed like it was running well. Putting the air filter on amounts to a slight amount of choke, so why would it um, seem like it's now throttled up? I don't really have a good answer for that. But she's a runner. We're making progress. Runs pretty good. Just need to figure out how to control it. putting the air filter on to see if that makes any difference and it doesn't seem to if I hold the idle it uh, slows down here I'm trying to adjust the idle set screw I've been doing some reading and apparently it's pretty easy to take the firewall out being able to take out that firewall so easy is huge um, yeah, now I have easy access to the battery, and I can even get to the starter easier. That's a big help. What I'm seeing under here, the frame all looks pretty solid. That's good. All right, so the other thing I figured out, researching, this here is a blower, which attached to this air hose, which then attached to the back of the firewall and went down to kind of around this area. What that is, that's a disc brake, and on this side there's another disc brake. This is the transmission, and it has a differential in it. So when you're going, it sends power to both of these brakes, and obviously, well, through the, through the brake here. But it drives this chain, which drives the shaft, which drives the side chains on both sides. Well, when you pull this, 
this lever engages the brake on this side so all the power through the differential gets transferred to the other side and these wheels will stop spinning so it's like a bulldozer or almost the opposite of a z-turn you pull back you're going to go left um, you pull back with the right you're going to go right so pretty simple design and uh right here is the dipstick it screws in for the transmission actually that might be easier to get from this side i can tell you that oil looks perfect looks like it's fresh not it's obviously not that fresh but it's not used much that's for sure what's interesting is i only see one mark on this dipstick and the level's just above it so i guess that's going to be fine it's just strange that there's not a a low and a fill. I mean, this says oil on it. It doesn't look homemade. I mean, it's just above the mark, so that must be good. So I just want to make sure the brake fluid looks okay and that there's enough in it. So there's a sight glass on the side. I'm pretty sure you're just supposed to fill it up to the sight glass, and it is. So I think that's fine. Yeah, same there. Okay, those are good. All right, so here are the brake pads. They're plenty thick, and you can see the, when I move the machine, you can see the discs moving in the pads. You can also see all the chains moving. And what else I found is a fuel filter. So as far as this thing not charging, it might be because the battery was full. It has a regulator and until the battery drops to a certain voltage, it's going to turn off, which is fine. You don't want to sit there and constantly overcharge a battery. So I'm not convinced that it's not working just yet. So we'll leave that for a different day. Right now what I want to do is get this thing running right so that we can take it out for a ride. And I was thinking about my idle issue. The fact that this thing doesn't want to go all the way back and the way this works, I mean, this is a governor, and it pushes the throttle closed when the RPMs get too high. Um, I was looking at the specs on this engine. They recommend an idle speed of 1,200 RPM. It is possible that you're not getting enough oil circulation if you're idling lower. So I don't want to, you know, idle it lower just because it sounds good and it's able to idle that lower. So rather than trying to overcome this, I'm gonna check what the idle RPMs are and uh, also make sure that that governor's working. And once we do that, and hopefully get it running right. Oh, the other thing, uh, I looked up and I found that the pilot screw is supposed to be a, a turn and a quarter out and the, the main jet is supposed to be two and a half out. So I am not on the right numbers there. Half, one and a quarter. Half, one, one and a half, two, two and a half. That's where it's supposed to be, according to the manual. So let's get this thing started, and we're gonna check the RPM and see if this governor's working. Now, after sitting overnight, is this battery gonna start again? That'll be kind of interesting to see. choked a little longer. Hmm. It was running better before. Yeah, sometimes small engines will frustrate you and me. Sometimes it, it wants to idle and die, and then other times it'll idle okay, and then other times it wants to keep racing. And I tend to think when it's racing like that, it's a little bit lean. I'm not sure. What I am going to do is check the ripums with my ripometer. 
I didn't get it on film, but I was checking the RPMs. I've got a piece of reflective tape down there on the, the crankshaft and um, it's idling at 1900. It should be 1200. Um, when I turned this down and held it back, you know, it is where I suspected it should be, where it sounds good, where the belt comes all the way up um, is where it should be idling. This is hitting an end point, not here, but in the governor itself. So then I check the high RPM and it's only supposed to go to 3600 and the governor doesn't respond at all. So the governor's not working. I'm always hesitant to, um, to change the setting on a governor, but in this case, it's not doing anything for me. So we are going to try to reset it. I do have the procedure in the service manual. I'm not sure that screw matters. What does matter is this shaft is supposed to be all the way clockwise. Yeah, right there. And the governor is supposed to be all the way clockwise. Yeah, that may have been set wrong. Let's see how that does. Wow, that's amazing. It made a huge difference. So it uh, it got up to 4,000, a little higher than it should. Probably not a high enough to cause damage, but I don't want it doing that. So what you do is you put a throttle, there's a little tab on this right here that gives you a throttle stop and it won't let you give it more throttle than a certain amount. Obviously I still have a lot more work to do, but I kind of want to put this thing back together and let's take it for a ride. Alright, now hopefully this thing's going to run right now that I put the air filter back on the last time it did not. works I think you know what's coming next so if you don't know what's coming I took the rear floorboard out and I've got the plugs in and I bet you can guess why now all right now a smarter guy would probably have a rope on this and have a tractor nearby to pull it out in case it leaks like crazy but uh yeah let's see what happens I didn't want to charge into the pond with velocity because I wanted to stay in the shallow water in case it was going to leak. Wow, I'm stuck already. 
That sucks. The bottom around the edges of the pond is very deep mud and it just doesn't do well in that. Once the tires sink into, into the mud to the point that the belly of the machine is contacting the mud, it's basically high centered. Uh, but I do finally get out of it and get it floating. And it does float. Here I'm going as fast as I can driving at the shoreline to see if I can drive out of it. Nope. Man. There's a little bit of water in there, but not bad. Better than I expected. I definitely need more weight in the back to get this thing to float right. Well, that was kind of a failed maiden voyage. Although not really. It ran okay. It just doesn't perform as well as an amphibious vehicle as I expected. That's all right. Let's go get something to pull this thing out. It's not gonna sink right there. It's like the wind is back with a vengeance. So I don't know how much of that you saw. I just put on my waders. I hooked to the winch bracket in the front and to the hitch on the truck. It's in neutral. I ought to be able to just pull it out. If that bracket is strong enough to winch, it ought to be strong enough to be pulled, right? Here we go. That was quite a maiden voyage. So a couple things I notice. I don't think this is the stock steering mechanism. Um, 
that's all the water that I accumulated in all that time. So that's not too bad. All in all, I'm pleased. It doesn't, it's not as good of a, of an all-terrain vehicle as I was hoping, but, um, maybe someone who knows a lot about Argos can tell me what do I need to do? Just weight distribution? Do I need to build a ramp of rocks or something so that I can drive in and out of the pond? Because it's, it's only when you're kind of half on muck and half in the water that it gets stuck. If you're out in the water, you can actually go pretty well. So it's like I just need a ramp for entering and exiting. So I got more work to do on this thing. I need to do maintenance. I need to grease all the bearings i need to what do i need to do i need to make sure the starter's okay i need to get the battery charging i need to lube the chains and i'm sure there's other things that i'm forgetting about um oh one other thing i want to do before we end this video is scope the cylinders again i want to want to get in there and see how the the walls of the cylinder look now that it's run so yeah let's take it back up to the shop and we'll do that Actually looks the plugs both look like the soot's kind of burning off of them I don't know if you can see that I never did clean them off so that's a good sign I think the thing's running really well yeah I like this thing this thing boots up really quick it's ready to use in just a few seconds and um, that's very useful you know one thing I could say to Vivor is if they had two wheels and it would allow you to do like up and down and left and right either or both that would be uh, that would be even better, but I mean this is sweet. This is I like this a lot compared to the the regular ones that are out there with the side cameras. See how our cylinder looks. That's interesting. Not sure what to make of that, but it runs good, so I'm not too worried about it. Let me, both plugs are out so it can't start. Yeah. I'm surprised that there's like oil in there. I mean, I, I, there's just no way after running all that time that that's left over from the oil that I put in. Is there? That doesn't make any sense. That would have long since burned up. So yeah, I'm all the way facing back the way I came. Yeah, I'm not sure what to make of that oil. So there's a valve. So if I spin the engine, that's going to move. And there goes the other valve. Pretty cool. All right, let's look at the other one. That one's looking very much the same, a little bit of oil in there. Yeah, honestly, I was hoping I'd, uh, I'd look in here after running it and this would just look perfect, but it doesn't, but that's okay. The thing runs good. And, you know, I've never done this before. I don't know, like tried to look at uh, a cylinder after running to see if it looks better. So I, I really don't know what to make of this. If you do, leave a comment. Interesting stuff. I do like the boroscope. Yeah, other things I want to do, get the lights working. Um, there's not even a place to, to turn the lights on. So I'm going to need to add a switch and adjust the brakes because I think the, the steering's not quite working right. So yeah, definitely more to do on this little guy, but what a fun little project. You'll be seeing more of this in the future. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one.